Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about a particularly ugly topic, the topic of child sexual abuse. And I want to talk about an idea that exists in the mainstream here in America that I think is actually facilitating this sort of abuse and making it harder to crack down on. And that is the idea that you can separate people into good people and bad people. So these two groups, good people and bad people. If you believe that you can separate people in that way, it's pretty easy to reason, oh, anyone who would commit sexual abuse is a terrible person. And similarly, to reason, if someone's a good person, then they could never commit sexual abuse. The problem with this idea is that people are complex, and it's possible for a person to have a lot of really good qualities, and yet still do terrible things. If you believe in this idea that you can cleanly separate people like this, it can make you likely to come to the defense of someone who is accused of sexual abuse and fight to have charges against them dismissed or ignored. When people start speaking up about being abused, often the people who speak up will be ignored or sometimes ridiculed or retaliated against. And I think a lot of this is due to the fact that there are a lot of people out there who have had positive experiences with people who, who commit abuse. I think it's easy for a person to reason, oh, I know this person, I've known them for a long time, and I really trust them, and they've never done anything to me, and I've never seen them do anything harmful to anyone around me, so they must be a good person. And then the person reasons that it's impossible for that person to commit abuse, and they use that as a justification for dismissing anything, any allegations of abuse made against that person. I think it's really important for us to get outside this way of thinking. I would like us to embrace the idea that people are complex, and that it's possible for someone to have a lot of really good qualities and still do something really horrible, including abusing children sexually. If we acknowledge that, it actually helps us to protect children from abuse, because it, it enables us to see the possibility, to entertain the possibility, that someone that we know, trust, and like is actually committing that abuse. And then we can investigate it, we can see what's really going on. It can be hard sometimes to get out of that way of thinking, especially when we're close emotionally to someone who is affected by these issues. It seems like a natural response for a lot of people to become extremely angry when they learn that someone has been abused sexually, especially a child. And when we're angry, it's easy to just think about people in this very black and white way, like, you're really a terrible person if you do these things. And when people are thinking like that, it's then easy to sort of assume like, oh, terrible people, they do all these bad things, and they're just bad overall. And that can blind us, as I said before, to seeing that people, like people that we know and like and trust, can do these things. It's important for us to acknowledge the tendency that we can have to reason in that way when we're angry, and to really embrace the idea that people are complex, and that you can't cleanly categorize people as good people or bad people. If we do that, and if we integrate that into our value system in a really foundational way, I think it can ultimately protect children against sexual abuse, because it can help us on a community level to listen to people when they come forward, and to not jump to any conclusion that someone has necessarily not done something just because we like, know, and trust that person. So thank you for your time. I hope that this has challenged your ideas in some way, and I hope that you've gained some insight, and I ultimately hope that this will protect people in the long run from these sorts of abuse. Thank you.